Okay, how fast should you run your long runs? Now, whether you're training for 5K, marathon or beyond, this is not only probably the most common asked question, but it's also the biggest indicator of how successful you're gonna be at distance running. So it's really important to get right. It's also extremely complicated because there's so many variations. And the typical off the shelf answer would be, well, it all depends on effort. But unless you have the ability to go to a lab, to get fit, to go to a lab, to get a lactate threshold test done, and then work specifically to heart rate zones and your lactate and what your blood is doing, this hopefully will simplify things and make it possible for you to understand three different long runs, why we do different long runs and what sort of training stimulus they're hitting and how fast to run each one of those long runs based on my goal marathon pace and what pace I ran for each of those three individual long runs. So I really want to simplify this because I'll often see, if you put it into Google now, you're going to find all sorts of answers and it's very, very, very difficult to figure out for you specifically what you should be doing. But let's try. So the three main types of long run are long, slow distance, progressive long run, or tempo long run. What are the three differences and why would you need to do three different types of long run or two different types of long run? We've got to keep this fun because essentially we're doing something that takes time, it takes our energy, and we want to move forward. We've got to keep it fun, and with that fun comes variation. That's always, for me, point number one. But the second point is, it's hitting different training stimulus. So being out there just sort of on your feet, going slow for long, slow distance, is a different training stimulus to finishing at goal marathon pace. In terms of pacing, I'll use my marathon goal and pace and then the training that I did, and the training that I did for long, slow distance, for progressive long run, and tempo long run, and then I'll talk about percentages, different, slower, faster, etc. and then you can apply this to your own running. So really easy, my goal marathon pace per kilometer was three minutes 20, and that's five minutes 20 per mile, and I'll put these different paces in miles and kilometers in the description, so you can look at that and sort of, again, work out the percentages. But for simplicity, three minutes and 20 seconds, two hours 20 for the marathon, is 10 times 20 seconds. So it makes it easier to look at plus and minus 10 or 20%. So for long, slow distance, this will give you an idea of how slow that should be in relation to the goal marathon pace. So long, slow distance for me, but going out there and running 24 kilometers, and let's keep using the example of 24 kilometers for these three different types of long run, 24 kilometers in two hours, so 12 kilometers per hour, five minutes per kilometer. So that's 50%, exactly 50% slower than my goal marathon pace. So it feels easy, it's in zone one and zone two, it's very comfortable for me, but it's also not so slow that I'm running in a different way. So my biomechanics, I'm still running, I'm still practicing running, I'm still bringing my arms up the same way, I'm still, I'm still landing mid foot, toe, ankle, knee, hip is all aligned, practicing running whilst I'm out there. I'd put those in at the start of my training schedule or before I start my training schedule so that then in the focus 12 weeks before your target race, you can then get more specific. And the second two types of run are more specific, the progressive long run and the tempo long run. For the progressive long run, 24K long run, let's use an example. And let's split that into thirds. So 8K, 8K, 8K. So 320 per kilometer is my marathon pace, the goal marathon pace. So we want to keep this relative. So how I would start this is 20% slower, first eight kilometers at four minutes per kilometer. The next eight kilometers, the middle, would be 10% slower. So it would be 340 per kilometer. And then the last eight kilometers would be marathon pace, 320 per kilometers. So what I get in that is 20% slower than marathon pace. I'm still putting effort in. I'm, I'm going into zone two and then zone three, putting a lot of effort in there. And then I'm ramping up and I'm gearing myself up to run negative splits in races. So I'm building endurance, I'm building speed endurance, and I'm teaching my body to run at marathon pace and very, very close to marathon pace. So all the muscles and all the energy that I'm using on marathon day, I'm training. 
and getting this as a specific long run. Super, super, super important. And loads of super compensation for that. Great run to get right. And it's something you can progress onto during the training schedule. Tempo long run. If again, we use 24 kilometers, then that might look something like four kilometers at four minutes per kilometer. So again, marathon pace, 320 per kilometer. So four kilometers at four minutes per kilometer, middle 16 kilometers at marathon pace to 10 miles at marathon pace, final four kilometers, at four minutes per kilometer. Or I might check the body out there and think, actually, I feel pretty good. I'll just do 10% slower than marathon pace. So you try to get, and this is the art of coaching yourself or the art of being coached. When you can grab extra pieces of fitness like that, if you're feeling good, and some days you'll have a great day where you feel 10 out of 10, some days you won't be feeling great and you'll just get it done. And maybe that's the day to go and do long, slow distance. Or put the run back because it's an important session. You've only got two important sessions per week and it's easy to put that back and make sure that you hit that on good night's sleep and everything, all the stars are aligned. That might look something like 340 per kilometer to finish with. And that's a great 24 kilometers with 16 kilometers, 10 miles at marathon pace. So that's hitting endurance, specific long run for my marathon. So I'm all my biomechanics, energy systems, mindset, psychology, all moving towards the marathon goal pace. There's three different long runs there, long, slow distance, progressive long runs, tempo long runs, and the different paces specifically to my marathon pace, which is easy, easy to chop up, 10 times 20 seconds, three minutes 20 per kilometer for a 220 marathon, and you can apply those to your runs. So variations are endless. And what I will say is if you have a goal, whether it's three months away or 12 months away, that goal doesn't need to stay the same. So if you've got a magic number of, okay, I wanna run a marathon in three hours 30, if your training indicates that you can run faster than that, then go for it. You don't need to stay on track for that. If your training suggests that actually, once I've added this extra endurance, I'm much faster. Once I've added all these speed intervals, I'm much quicker in my long run for the same effort. And again, as I said at the start of the video, if I was to give you the textbook off the shelf answer, it would be to go into the lab, do a proper lactate, make sure somebody's designed the lactate threshold. And if you need that, let me know, but go into the lab, find out what the blood is doing to different effort levels and different paces, and then see how that correlates in the field. Ideally, get somebody to test you in the field out on the road as well, in, in ideally the same conditions that you're gonna run the race in, and then go from there. But not all of us have access to that. So if you have any questions at all, and I'm sure you have many, pop them in the comments below. Let me know where are you up to at the moment with your training? What are you training towards? And is there a sticking point? Is there a plateau that you're struggling to break through? And as always, like, notify. <laughs> and as always, like, subscribe, and smash the notification bell.